it'd be very hard not to have some of those feelings when you're living, as I say, in a family where, you're, where you don't see yourself anywhere. But you, but you have to acknowledge the parts of the child that are real. You know, like if, if a child has certain talents and then those talents come through early, be sure to validate those talents and, and give them the opportunity to explore them. And you know, and I'll have parents say, yeah, I do, but then they get halfway through whatever it is they're doing and they quit. That they don't follow through. Okay, so, and that, that is another problem that many adoptees have. They don't always follow through with what they're doing. So that's something to look at too. Um, uh, the dissociation is a big problem. You know, when kids are young, they dissociate usually by daydreaming, uh, fantasizing, that kind of thing. When they get older, that doesn't work so very well anymore, and they dissociate by alcohol, drugs, sex, those kinds of things, to, to kind of alleviate the pain for a while. And that's something to really be careful about, because that's not something that you want to deal with. I mean, some of you who've adopted kids who've had parents who were uh, abusive or who were drug addicts and had to give up their, their children because of that. You're all, you're kind of more apt to be on the lookout for, for that kind of thing, whether it's valid, valid or not. But oftentimes, you know, we, we as parents don't like to think of our kids doing any of those things. And, and, you know, and if you go to certain schools and you don't think it happens in those certain schools, and I can tell you that it happens in all schools. You know, that there is no school so good that they don't have alcohol and drug problems. So, um, so kind of be on the lookout for those kinds of things. Now, boundaries are important. Um, boundaries are important because, well, you know, there, there's this thing about, I don't want to get too close to you because you might leave me, but then there's, a, I'm going to hang on to you for dear life because you might leave me. And so there has to be some kind of a, a balance. And of course, kids that, that, that are secure in their situation don't have any trouble going back and forth between being close and being apart. You know, we as, we as a people, we as human beings, are really meant to be, you know, in, in groups. We're not, you know, in America, we think of all this individualism. We've got to be, got to do it myself, you know? I can do it all myself, and I don't need you. That's not really true. That's not really true. We need each other. We need each other because that's how human beings have always been. You know, this is still in our still in our DNA. When, when from the time we were cavemen or whatever, all the way through to clans and tribes and groups, we need each other. And the more we can, I mean, some of you who have support groups or you have women's groups or you have or you have guys you go out <coughs> basketball with or something, you know that there's something really important about that group that you're in and it's some it's a it's these are people that you can count on and in the case of adopted people who feel as if they have to go hide somewhere when they're feeling bad because that's that's the first thing they did in their life and that feels comfortable it really isn't the best thing because you can you can make this loop of emotion with another person which is very healing and those of you who are now in, in support groups can can validate that because you are with people that you that you um, have the same experience with, and that is always very helpful. Now, the only thing I have against some of these support groups is that they get into some kind of a uh, I don't know a hole and can't get out. Like if you get into the anger thing. Now it's okay to know you're angry and it's okay to be able to express that anger, but you know. We, we found out, there used to be this thing about, well, you know, you just have to express this thing or you beat your pillows up or you do whatever. And of course, what we found out in studying anger more is that the more you do it, the better it gets. You know, the more angry you can get. So it isn't that, that expressing anger all the time is healing at all. You, you know, knowing you're angry, know, knowing that there's something inside you that you haven't expressed because you were one of the compliant kids or, you know, whatever, even if you weren't adopted, that you never really were allowed to express negative feelings. It's a good thing to know that. It's a good thing to be able to do that. But it's also, there, there comes a time when you have to say, well, what am I going to do about this? You know, and you don't just get into a group and all of you complain and complain about your birth mothers and your adopted mothers and your, you know, whoever else. 
And, but, but you say, okay, what are we going to do to make ourselves more healthy instead of just, just being angry or just being whatever, you know? It's very important to get out of that space and into something that's more healing. And so somebody has to be the person to say, well, let's try this or let's try that. Let's, let's see what we can do. For one thing, one of the things that you can do in these groups, I think, is to be more authentic by saying what you believe about certain things without worrying if everybody else is going to agree with you or not. Who cares if they agree with you? You know, you, you don't have to have everybody agreeing with you. You're never going to have everybody agreeing with you. Because if we figured it all out years ago, we wouldn't have all these different people with different ideas. <laughs> Which we know isn't true. We know everybody has all kinds of different ideas. So it's very important to be able to say that. So one of the things I'd like to see the support groups do is I'd like to see a bunch of adoptees in there saying, you know, my favorite food is, and this is why I like it, and everybody else just acknowledges that's their favorite food instead of saying, what do you mean you like that? <laughs> you know, in other words, be brave, take risks. This is something that, this is something that has to happen. Risks have to be taken because if you stay in that same loop that you've been in all this time with not trusting anybody, keeping your distance from people because they might run away, trying to be in control of everything but not really be in control of your life because you haven't figured out what you want to do with it yet, you know, all of these things, you, you have to take a risk. You have to take small steps in order to <coughs> find those places where you really fit in and really can become yourself. And it starts with just these, you know, I mean, and I know that some of you probably are very, very uh, verbal about what you believe and what you think and so on and so forth. Okay, that may be true, but how do you feel about the people that disagree with you? You know, can you allow that to happen? Can you allow people to disagree with you and be okay with it? Or do you think that they're not validating you, if, I mean, they're not paying attention to you if they're not agreeing with you? And a lot of teenagers will do this, you know, they'll tell their mom something, and their mom disagrees with them, they say, <clears throat> they, they feel invalid, invalidated, that, that their mother doesn't like them, or doesn't care about them, if she doesn't agree. And you know, support, I'm going to talk more about the difference between support and agreement, because it's not the same thing. If you really see someone doing something that's bad for them, and you agree with them about it, is that support? No, it's not. And they may say, well, you're not supporting me. Well, maybe, maybe you should say, well, yes, I am, because I'm thinking of your well-being. I'm not thinking about whether you're right or not. Because, and this is, a, this is a difficult thing. This is hard for parents and children. It's hard for friends, you know, to be able to do that. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Gonna, I want to have some time for questions. So let me see if there's anything I... Uh, some of this stuff I'll, I'll talk more about in my other session. Um, I guess one of the things I want, I want to just touch on the core beliefs again, saying, saying this. Whatever your core beliefs are, or there's something that's negative about yourself, I'd like you to examine it. And this goes for everybody. You know, do you have, a, do you have something that you really don't like about yourself or you think, if you do, then change it. You know, either change it or stop giving yourself a bad time about it. Because we can change things. We can change ourselves. We can change, you know, I'm 74 years old. I'm still changing me. So you can do it, you know, you can, you can keep changing in your life. You can learn new things, and when you learn new things, that brings more, more input. And so this is a very important thing to know. You don't have to keep believing that you were a bad baby, that's why your mom gave you up, that you weren't very good in your adoptive families because you weren't really like the rest of the family. You don't have to believe that, you know, that somehow or other you are defective. Because you're not. You're not defective. And if there's something that you're doing, some behavior that you're doing, that maybe some of your friends are saying, hey, did you ever think about changing that behavior? Okay, think about it. Think about it. Is that a behavior you want to change? Is that something you want to do something different, do a different way? Because it's really important to know that you can change the way you behave. Behavior is something you can change. You know, you've really just come up 
And now, what do you do about the feelings? Okay, well, number one, if you react to them, it's usually going to be a okay. experience. I would just implore, please, please, adoptive mothers, read this book so you can understand really what your child is experiencing and going through and respect that, um, that, that experience. So important. And I just thank you so much for your work. It's really changed my life. So